In this video I'll show how I designed and built a remote controlled airboat with 3D printed parts. If you're not familiar, an airboat is just a boat that has an air propeller instead of a screw in the water. They're used in similar roles to hovercraft in swamps or shallow water environments, but obviously a lot less complicated since they don't need an air cushion to ride on. They're most commonly found in the southeastern US, where there's millions of acres of swampland where a conventional boat would run aground or foul its props on underwater debris. Lots of other weird stuff happens here too. My initial design used a pretty narrow hull specifically sized with an opening on top so that I could fit this guy inside as a pilot. Spoiler alert, the design ended up being changed. Anyway, here's what the thing looks like taken apart. The hull is 3D printed in multiple thin sections and glued together. For propulsion, I plan to use two counter-rotating propellers to cancel out any torque roll or p-factor that might occur when the boat rapidly pitches up or down. I had a big supply of acrylic paint, so I just hand painted this part instead of spraying it, which was pretty nice because I was able to do it inside the house. This piece came out with some pretty ugly layer glitches, so I think I'll be finishing the outside with body filler. The body filler isn't waterproof, so I sealed it off with a coat of epoxy resin. So far so good, but before I do a float test I'll need to plug up that hole in the bottom left part of the boat. That's going to be the intake for a pump I'll be using for a water cannon. Here's the pump itself. It runs off 12 volts and pumps up to 80 psi at 4 liters or about 1 gallon per minute. My plan is to use it when I'm racing against other boats, either to knock them over or flood them with water. Once the sealant dried, I did a quick float test before continuing with the build. Come to find out, I had some major problems. First of all, as you can tell, the CG is way too far back, but in addition to that, the hole is pretty close to its carrying capacity. Even if I placed the battery and speed controllers at the very front of the boat, it would still fall over backwards. Also, the hole was kind of narrow, and that made me wonder if it would also flip over to one side. With all the electronics and parts included, the boat weighed in at 3.5 pounds and that didn't include the weight that would inevitably be added by body filler, resin, and paint on the top side. Going back to my CAD model, I found that the hull displaced about 155 cubic inches, which is just over 5.5 pounds of buoyancy. I think that was a little too close for comfort, and after thinking the matter over, I decided the hull would need an entirely new design. <laughs> So 
So I widened the hole from 7 inches to 11 inches, added about 5 inches to the length, and reduced the taper on the front end to add to the maximum buoyancy. The motor assembly remained the same though. The new design had a maximum displacement of well over 10 pounds, so I've got a pretty safe margin for buoyancy now. Also, the increased width should make it very hard to roll over. Alright, let's try this again. I 3D printed some structural straps that I glued between the sections of the hull to keep it together since I didn't trust the integrity of only the thin edges being glued. Next I'll paint and mount the rudder fins which will complete the motor assembly. There's still a lot to add, but the weight seemed pretty reasonable so far. Now let's see how it floats. I put the pump up front to balance it, but once all the electronics are installed, they should take care of that and the pump can be moved to the back. I was much happier with how the new design floated, so I went ahead with building the rest of the boat, starting with the top shell. This part is screwed onto the hull, so while I was gluing the sections together, I made sure to screw them individually before applying glue so that there wouldn't be any alignment problems when the part was finished. Edges rarely align perfectly on big multi-section parts like this, which is why I'm using body filler on them after I glue them together. This is the removable cap that'll go on top of the shell. Next I moved on to wiring everything. The motors and servo were easy enough, but I still needed something to control the water cannon pump and, uh, well, the most important feature of the boat, this. No racing boat is complete without a remote controlled speaker playing Kenny Loggins. So here's a look at all the electronics put together. I have an XT60 connector for the battery, which powers these two speed controllers that run the motors. This wire in the middle is for the rudder servo. Everything is controlled by the receiver, here. 
These two wires coming out of the receiver are for commanding the pump and the audio, which is handled by an Arduino board. Lastly, the audio from the Arduino is amplified with this circuit, which I pulled out of a PC speaker. Okay, here's a more clear diagram of what's going on. I've got 12 volts from a three cell battery, which is on a parallel connector to the two ESCs, which have their three phase wires going to the motors. I have a receiver, which sends the commands to both ESCs on the same line, but also receives five volts from them because these ESCs and most other models have a five volt regulator inside them. The receiver also controls a servo, which drives the rudder fins using that same five volt rail. Now, the pump is also on the same parallel connector with the ESCs, but there's a MOSFET that needs to be turned on to complete the circuit. The MOSFET is controlled by an Arduino board, which is in turn controlled by a receiver channel. Now, of course, it's not necessary to have this whole board just to turn on and off a DC load because RC switches exist for that, but the Arduino board was already there because I'm also using it to play audio from an SD card. Again, both functions on the board are ultimately controlled by the receiver channels. So let's do a test to make sure all the components are working. The last piece of hardware I need to install before I screw the top on is the pump output hose. This is connected to a barb fitting with a 3D printed push fit adapter to go in the nose of the boat. The threads face outward so that I can easily change out nozzle adapters which I'll be 3D printing. That way I can experiment with different designs to get the optimal output power for the water cannon. Yeah, that definitely needs a nozzle. The pump can generate up to 80 psi, so I can get a much longer throw by pinching off the water flow. I printed this nozzle adapter from a CAD model of a 3/8 NPT female threaded cap, which I added a 4 millimeter hole to. This was dramatically more effective, and now the water gun shot a 4 to 5 foot long jet. It also served as a very effective thrust reverser because I'd had to run my throttle about half to counteract the recoil. Everything seems to work fine, but the boat was a little underpowered, pulling only 8 amps at full throttle between both motors. They could easily handle more than twice that much. Also, the propellers had a tendency to bite into the water when the boat leaned in a hard turn, so I redesigned the motor assembly so that the props were above the hull. 
I also increased the size of the rudder fins to have more control authority and replaced the two bladed props with three bladed props that had a steeper pitch. I also did away with the audio player because it added weight and complexity and I couldn't even hear the music over the motors. My only regret is that I couldn't put my little turtle guy in the cockpit because he'd push the CG too far forward and the boat wouldn't be able to hydroplane. Before I tested it in the water, I tried the boat on the tile floor. The new propellers provided more than enough thrust to start sliding across the floor, which the original ones couldn't do. Now let's see how it does in the water. The pool didn't really give me a lot of space to pick up speed, so I headed to a larger body of water. Well this was a really fun project to build and I've got a few friends who are building their own airboats so hopefully soon I'll have some racing videos. Thanks for watching.